value of social equity is what you can contribute and get from your community. And if we start incorporating that into our everyday society without having to rely on the dollar, screw the overtime. For one or two weekends, just say, you know what? We're going for a picnic. We're going to the ocean. Yeah, Yeah, there's a lot of crap in the world. We're going to just make a day of it because that is what we have right now. Get the books, start reading, start start investing because people are going to start searching for answers. They're going to want questions. Just invest in yourself. Get offline for a bit. Listen to a podcast like this. If it helps just get some processing while you're sitting there fishing or whatever you do for your downtime. Welcome to The Antoine Effect, the show where we optimize our human potential and delve into the mysteries of the universe. I'm your host, Antoine Billboard, a human-informed breathwork facilitator and a passionate content producer. With my childlike curiosity and optimistic spirit, I'm here to guide heart-driven entrepreneurs like you towards a brighter future for humanity. Each episode, we'll dive into thought-provoking and daring topics from personal growth, self-discipline, to alternate self-healing modalities, and all the way to quantum physics and consciousness levels. Through this conversation and my own journey, I seek to help you better understand yourself, your human body, and the universe we live in. So join me on this journey of self-discovery and transformation as we unlock the mechanics of the universe and actualize our true potential with your weekly dose of The Antoine Effect. What's going on, gorgeous CEO? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're watching on YouTube, please feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. And if you're listening anywhere on the podcast world, if you leave a rating and review, that would mean the world to me. And it really is what keeps me going. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Brendan Crawl. And I have to say, he he's like me, but 10 times worse. No, I'm just kidding. He's amazing. He spent, I think, a decade diving into various material from esoteric knowledge, the occult, everything that has to do with today's society, Hollywood, the music industry, the governing bodies, who are the actual real puppeteers owning the world. Brendan was born, adopted, and raised primarily in the New England area of the United States, but he has always lived a little bit of everywhere. He went to sixth grade, GED, then college. Always have had a rebellious streak in researching things outside the conventional norm or acceptive narrative. He's been a writer since 11 years old, and he was president of his community college newspaper for a semester. He's been published twice in a statewide annual writing competition for two consecutive years. Wow. Emphasizing poetry and Hemingway-esque short story fiction. With his love of literature, He loves interpreting historical texts and legends from both mythology and the Bible with unique metaphorical insights of compare slash contrast between ancient cultures. And today is exactly what we're going to be delving into with the fascinating Brendan. His Instagram is chronology101, which is a play on word with his last name, Brendan Crawl. And I think that is very fitted because he brings such a unique view and perspective and insights that can trigger a lot. But if you read it carefully, it actually makes a lot of sense. Today's conversation was more of an overview about the old round of diving into rabbit holes. And I really hope I'm going to be able to invite Brendan more often to the show. But for today's conversation, we kept it very relevant to what is happening today in society in regards of gender norms, political debates, and just how to position oneself in a constant state of confusion, distraction, division, and all of that jazz. So if this is your cup of tea, then keep up watching this episode of The Antoine Effect with Brendan Crawl. I'm Brandon Crawl. You can find me at Crawlology 101. I've always been kind of the researcher kid. I only went to sixth grade, so that's a fun little trivia fact. Then it was GED, right to college. And I wasn't doing so well at this other college because it was very denominationally focused. And I'm one of those guys, like, I'll think outside the box. I was always kind of rubbing up against this is what we're being taught, but my mind's always thinking like, well, what about this? Well, we don't mm-hmm. think like that because, you know, I was homeschooled. So I didn't think like that. And like I was saying before, I was kind of at home a lot with my mom. And when we were going to be doing a move, not going to be doing a move. And she was kind of going into a little bit of a drinking spell. 
So I would literally pick, go to the library. I'd read anything at home. Like we only had a few books. And at one point I ran out of books. So I started reading a dictionary before bed. <laughs> yeah, that's how boring I am. And I'm like a teenager. Most people are doodling on their phones. I'm picking, right. I'm reading a dictionary. It, when 2020 hit, like I knew this trivia stuff. I've always been a big history buff. Civil War is probably my favorite because I think that's honestly was the turning point for a lot of stuff in America, despite all the other Tartaria stuff. I have theories on that too. But again, that's just my personal take from what I have researched that there was a, definitely a an attack that's when they were that they were they're grabbing onto it like there were there were sharks in the water when we started but it wasn't until after lincoln got assassinated when they started going full guns blazing we're taking over this country mm. and we're going to do it ruthlessly and the irs and the civil rights movement stuff like that and like you said this is all orchestrated this is all orchestrated and by design and when 2020 was hitting i was like i'm seeing people being gullible i'm seeing people just it, it made me angry dude it, it was like how can you not know history, especially like the Spanish flu and stuff like that? And you're doing all of this, not thinking your government does not care about you because we've seen it time and time again, the psyops that they've done, how they've oppressed like the uh, Tuskegee Airmen, how the P Black Panthers originally got sparked. Could you define they for had, me what, what Black Panther is? Black Panthers was connecting to the CIA operations going on in Cuba. Got it. A lot of okay. people don't know that. Is it's just yeah. like the, the drug cartel that was going on that again started by the CIA. When we again, this is all stuff we don't talk about. We just blame them and they come a little, you know, cubicle in the history where nobody ever researches it. But when you mm. do, you start stumbling onto patterns, names, and cross-referencing, and you're like, no, 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 no. There's so much we're not connecting here. So when 2020 hit, I honestly was out of indignation, just started putting stuff out there, connecting dots with the biblical perspective on um my page on Instagram and it's been growing like crazy. And like I said, with this whole podcasting thing, I made one comment under uh, Nick Alvier. You might know him as the uh, doobie smoker from January 6th. And uh, he was old, kind enough and gracious enough to let me come on his show. I did it. And like by the time I did the second or third appearance, it was one of his most raved episodes. I think it was episode eight. He said, yeah, the people are telling me to snatch you up. You're, you're really good. So he's going to try to orchestrate it where I can have a podcast with him full time. Wow, that's awesome. And I mean, we need more of these. I was talking about it with one of my friends. We were talking about pretty privilege and how we were gifted with pretty privilege. Like she looks amazing. I look a certain way. And but we were also gifted with the gift of seeing, like seeing through the quote unquote lies and patterns and all of that, like recognizing patterns and still to some degree, but like cancel culture is real. So that's always a worry of ours or being yes. shadow banned, but like you're full on assuming like <laughs> being shadow banned is sort of your brand when it's yes. <laughs> you fully say it in the videos and it's just common thing. But like for us, when we have like a brand associated with our online presence, a little bit hard, it's a little bit harder, but it's become to a point where it's almost a duty. And if we were born in this body in this lifetime in this political climate, mm -hmm. we need to use the gifts that we have to make a change. So I very much appreciate you, Brendan, coming to my show to talk about these things. You Absolutely. said earlier before we started recording that you see yourself as rogue, like a rogue yeah. individual. And I resonate yeah. to that. As I was saying, I'm First Nation mixed with white, so I don't identify with either or. Mm -hmm. I'm too brown for the white people, but I don't. I don't have a word to say about Aboriginal or First Nation issues because I'm right. I'm too white for that. Same for like I'm a disgrace to my community for being gay and having conservative values. So it's a very mm -hmm. interesting time to be alive where we have these conflicting views really coming up to the surface, especially right. since 2020. It's like all of this darkness is coming to the surface, and it's always been there. It's always been there. It's it's orchestrated. It's it was very much hidden but for some reason i'm not too sure maybe with some assistance from above the stars the alignment the, the pole shifting whatever a lot more people are awakening and seeing it mm -hmm. it's like we're extracting the sebum out of the skin of life and it's just coming to the surface and we've got to clean it up before it's fresh and new again right that's what i was telling nick on one of the shows i said it, it's honestly like whack-a-mole of truth Ooh. where there's so many fires and whatnot that are screwing up and people talking, people are connecting again. And I know, I know, at least in America, by like 2027, they want to ins apply like a digital online passport. So you cannot okay. get access to the online unless you have this like digital, it's probably connect to your social security, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, that's great because I have a feeling like 2020, that's going to backfire because all the people like myself 
they could go to a park and just start speaking. Yeah. <laughs> have this thing where they're arresting people for talking and that's going to get more people going saying, well, what was he talking about that made this thing so interesting <laughs> in word of mouth? It's going to start dominoing effect. Like, I think everything after 2020 is just going to keep boomeranging back wow. whatever they're trying to do. But like, it's like the fish in Finding Nemo. Remember the scene where, where all the fish were in the net and that and, the, and they start all swimming downwards so that they can break the net? Yes. That's exactly what it is with people awakening. They're just like, wait, you want to pull me up and like take away everything? No, 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 no. So we all start swimming down to what is normal. We all start swimming uh, down and connecting. Yeah, I'm right? Chills. I'm getting really chills. Convincing. It's yeah. really beautiful. Yeah, it's like the whales attacking the fishing boats. The killer yes. whales attacking the fishing boats. Like Mother Nature is, Gaia is awakening to what is going on. And it's signaling, hey, like there's an issue here. Like this is not supposed to be the way we're treating ourselves. Mm -hmm. You have a Christian background. Yeah. You said something about, you, there's something you just said, like us meeting in parking lots to talk about these things because we're not allowed to do it online anymore. When that comes, forecast, yeah. Yeah, forecast yeah. a couple of years from now. That's very reminiscent of philosopher groups that would unite in basements and talk Socrates. about these things. Socrates, exactly. Or yeah. even Jesus and his followers at some point. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I told people. I said, guys, you don't get it. This is Every what time he made a cameo in a temple, there was a problem. <laughs> they kicked him out. Most of his ministry is walking or going to somebody's house. But we just keep saying, oh, this building is God's house. No, it's not. Mm. I can go on a whole thing with that, but continue. Sorry. <laughs> no, but that's, yeah. But I mean, I would love to go in that direction. Your mind is fascinating. But it was just to say that we, like, history repeats itself. Same with the mm. Spanish flu, all of these diseases. It's blueprint, replica of how to cause fear amongst the population with an invisible threat all the time in every era there's going to be people uniting together and free thinkers talking and right. the state is playing whack-a-mole to use your point like it's suppressing yeah. these voices and i feel like it's easier to suppress these voices nowadays with fact checks and being shadow banned but today whenever something gets shadow banned it piques my curiosity even more. I'm like, well, it must be true. Or this post is misleading. It's like, well, now I want to see why it's misleading. <laughs> and misleading where? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of like the scene, uh, if you, I'm not sure if you watch Game of Thrones, but Tyrion made the really awesome line where he was stating, he says, like, if you cut out a man's tongue, you're only proving that he had something worse to say. And I mm -hmm. think that's honestly the definition of 2020 after everything that we keep suppressing, especially in America, where it's like, oh, I got rights. I got my freedom of speech and stuff like that. It's like, yes, you do. But I think a lot of people, they're just become arrogant. They keep saying, I'm going to wave my flag. In the meantime, they ignore their Bible. They ignore what we were founded on. And I'm seeing a lot of arrogant little tweets or, or not comments back to me. They'll be like, oh, I bet you act this way because you've never been touched by a woman or you're such a nerd or that didn't happen. Or how come you go after Trump? Blah, blah, blah. You're probably a Biden supporter. It's like I go after everybody. But mm -hmm. under this particular comment, I go in after one particular person and then they immediately ought to assume I'm a Clinton voter or I'm a Biden supporter. And I think that's honestly where where Republicans are getting it so wrong. They're boasting that they're critical thinkers. And I'm like, I have seen more comments of indignation t aimed at towards me and so much hostility as opposed to asking further questions mm -hmm. about what mm -hmm. I just stated. They just automatically are like start throwing everything they got and they and it slurs. It's not even facts. It slurs. And I, I'm done with that. I honestly, for a good portion of my life, my dad, he was very much um, domineering. He came from a Nazi uh, fighter pilot from mm -hmm. Germany, came over and then he, with him, we had 10 kids, but like the, the way the system worked with him is all the older kids had to squeal on the younger kids and the younger kids squealed on him. In order to get in good with him, you had to like tell on somebody. And I'm one of those kids that's like, I didn't really care. I honestly just like hanging out with my mom. Like if she was in the garden, I'd help her start. She wants to go do something with the dog. I was helping her with that. And come to find out by my sister, like literally, I just found this out like five, six years ago. She's like, yeah, we were always telling on you because we were jealous of your interactions with mom. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> so you know, we're jealous and again i think maybe that was an adopted thing because all of us six of us were adopted so i think there was a little bit of the i want to connect mm -hmm. but they were going about it the wrong way whereas mm -hmm. me it was just genuine i don't mm -hmm. i'm not trying to win favor i'm not trying to become popular something like that i'm honestly at the point where i was listening to jordan peterson he was saying if you can write and you can articulate you can do pretty much anything and that's honestly where i'm at with my page 
People Amen. like the way I word something. And again, it's like 220 words. I'm on a word limit, but I try my darndest to make sure I word and articulate it the exact way so nobody can cross over and get upset. And I try to do it from a neutralist perspective and also from faith. Mm. Some people get upset, but I'm over here like, listen, I'm not going to support your guy. I'm not going to support this party or whatnot. I, I am going to state what my perception is. We have what we call societal parrots. Or they watch Tucker Carlson, Ben Shapiro, Rachel, whoever. Yeah. Either side, either side. Mm-hmm. And I think most people, they don't realize it. Me, I can sit back and just be like, okay, that's interesting. Like, I love John Oliver sometimes. There's other times he'll like begin with his opening paragraph. I'm like, this isn't going to be an episode for me. But there's other times I appreciate it because I can hear both sides. And we have this thing where societal parrots have become program zombies. They love the way it's articulated. They love the way he described how I feel inside. Mm-hmm. And then repeat what he mm-hmm. said out in public. But then when it comes to facts or cross-examination, you don't know what to say. So mm-hmm. the other side starts laughing at you. And mm-hmm. we, and this is both sides. And when somebody independent like yourself or myself come over and we have our own facts, we're able to articulate, we're seen as either one anomalies. People like us at first because, oh, wow, you're such a rarity or you're incredibly young, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, this is called a normal education where you should be able to do this right and articulate without having to rely on somebody who went to a news station and they're casting right. their spells on you while you're watching them. Oof. Oof. Yes. That's why it's called broadcasting. Casting a spell. Back in the Tower of Babel, all languages were one. Why do you think colonization was a thing? Because they want everybody to speak English, one world language again. Mm-hmm. That's what they're trying to do 2.0. I know you just watched that episode with Nick, Bastards of Babylon, but that's where I stem from a lot of this stuff because I see the symbolism in masonry. They're trying to, masons, brick builders. What are you trying to rebuild? the tower and how are you going to do that by uniting society in one brick at a time okay oh my god and tv tell television tell a vision Mm -hmm. here if i bring some local events the the fires here in canada there's no smoke here but for some reason uh, brooklyn bridge the air is orange and it's thick we didn't have that much smoke over here i didn't watch the news I very much knew about it from like close friends or like Instagram family, and they all hear the broadcasted narrative. But my mind goes into directions like, well, this would greatly support a climate change agenda. The forests are burning in Canada. We need to do something, you know, once you have like the broader picture, it's easy to interpret events, dissect events. Thank you, Brendan. Yep. Yep in the perspective that is orchestrated but when what when you don't have that perspective that narrative and you rely on a government to protect you to sustain you to sustain society to provide for your needs healthcare, all of that we're yes. canada is a nursery we have so many benefits but like if you take them away somebody cannot even myself i couldn't survive for my own life <laughs> but that's what that's what they've created with right. society and that's you you mentioned something earlier about like waving your flag if you don't wave nowadays if you don't wave the same flag as somebody else they'll jump at you for not having the same beliefs yes for not repeating what is said by either of the side because you don't fit into these fabricated Cat fights. Fabricated, fabricated, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, and it, it's, it's super sad because even like the LGBTQ plus LMNOP community is divided by those who are fully supporting it and those who are seeing the bull crap. That's creating more division. But mm-hmm. what I'm, what, what's going to, what's that going to lead to? Like even Black Lives Matters, the women's rights, all of these social injustices that are right. seeking balance and seeking right. justice are turning into the authority to be like, do something, fix this. But that's right. where a totalitarian regime can come in. Absolutely. Well, I have two things I want to talk about. Please. But one, I was playing, um, are you familiar with Dungeons and Dragons? I've heard of it. Well, go on. It's like, it's fantasy role-playing mm-hmm. thing. You roll your dice just for odds and you create a character and it's fantasy and stuff like that. So I'm playing with this group. We usually meet on Saturday nights, pretty much all guys. But this one particular time, a guy brought his girl because she's done with college at the moment until the next semester. So in my character... I thought I'd play a little bit on the trope because we found her in some cell. And I said, it's all guys here. You know, I was saying it in the Puss in Boots 
accent. I said, oh, guys, here, you don't want to be with our group. Eh? And like, how do I put this delicately? Uh, you're a woman. <laughs> and everybody at the table took offense or they were laughing or even the girl was laughing. Some were shocked. But the one person in particular, he gets all upset. He's like, no, we're going to rewind that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why? We're playing in a medieval fantasy. I personally don't have anything against it. I said, two, my character is dating a woman that's all big and badass and stuff like that with the fighting. And I know her character is a monk. And monks are pretty tough characters mm -hmm. just in general. So I was playing on a trope because what I like doing in D&D is the role playing aspect of overcoming character flaws by playing them out. But the fact that he automatically went into feminist mode, like, oh, I got to defend that or no, we're not talking. We didn't get her character name as we were continuing to play because we all got distracted by his little, we got to rewind this. We didn't mm -hmm. find out why her character was there in the first place. And it really just robbed for the whole, it, it, it's a game, dude. I was improving. I would absolutely love having my character being proven wrong and playing that out like, okay, you know, you know. Right. Yeah. Keep it fun, lighthearted, playful, right. childlike. And, and that's what I'm saying. And that was my mentality. I'm and, and considering this girl is not usually with our party. The fact that she's showing one of my the characters kind of like, you know, having a reason why she's worth being around, having a reason to showing my character was wrong with his thinking or something like that. That all could have been played out and also given her a, a way in by having me having that flaw. And again, mm -hmm. medieval, this is typical trope of the medieval period. Mm -hmm. So the, again, that's just something of our, our culture. Just even playing, we're getting political about some things. I was honestly trying to give her a shot here of having her character be really cool or, you know, just again, and I'm willing to put my character in embarrassing situation for that to occur. But are we allowed to let that or develop organically from improv? No. So, again, it, for that, it just was ir irking me. But what you were saying um, uh, with the communist perspective, there's like the, the catch 22 of communism. At the end of the day, someone has to be in charge of the water and food. Someone has to be in charge of security. Someone has to be in charge of like, you know, teaching and whatnot, blah, blah. And then somebody has to be in charge of transportation. Those are like the four main pillars of a society to work. Okay. Okay, cool. Now say this is just free. It, every single time in communism, when that backfires is one person gets charge of all of that. And mm. then you never get it back again. Mm. Mm -hmm. Could it be Could it work? Yes. But you need that one bad dictator. Everything goes to crap. Everybody suffers after that. People can't even think like that. And that's what I like, especially about Socrates out of a lot of the philosophers, is that he was put to death for literally asking the question why and making the young men of Greece think, ask questions outside of what the norm and tradition has always said to do. We don't do that anywhere in cultures we can't even it's digital zombies dude i went into to work and i i'm seeing six or seven people were lined up for the door nobody made eye contact or looked up from their screen i clocked right. in turned around i do it like a periphery like I, I threw my arm out back and forth kind of see if anybody would see something coming toward no not at all and i'm like i'm young i have an old soul but that does not look right so it's sad when they treat their workers, and I think this is in a lot of places. I'm, just tell, I'm telling other people about it. They treat their workers like they're part of the machine. You know, like the scene in, um, was it Pirates in the Caribbean? Part of the crew, part of the ship, part of the ship, part of the crew. You right. Know? It's that mentality. You're now part of this vessel, and that's mm -hmm. just all you are anymore. You cannot leave <laughs> this machine. You are right. And if you, you're replaceable. And they're telling me, well, why don't you go for the white shirt, which is management position or something? And I'm like, I can't. I can't kiss butt. If I had to, I came up with this little post a while back, but it's like, you got to respect dirt. You can treat somebody like dirt. You can walk all over them. But at the end of the day, if you don't have dirt, you don't have anything to stand on. And it's having that humility and appreciation of just like, this is even a nature, anything that you are connected with something else. And you might think it's nothing, but at the end of the day, you, it's what you stand on. It's what we build homes on. It's what our roads are made. It's like respect every part. I can't do that. I would be advocating for my guys because that's the who I am. I can't kiss butt for corporate when I when I love my boys a lot more than whatever stupid rules you want for. I'm like, dude, you can even draft me. I'm going to be put in solitary or the mailroom because I am going to be the guy talking, saying, is this right? What we're doing? Are we are we fighting for the right reason? What mm -hmm. is nationalism blah, blah, blah. would you shut up i can't help myself 
Yeah, people don't even want to talk about it. They get this instinctual, like, repulsive reaction. And that's something I heard about, like, disgust. They have weaponized disgust. It's like you're disgusted by your neighbor for being too close, not wearing a mask. To go back to communism, democracy can be flawed in a way because it's majority rule. But what I like in a republic is that Every minority is protected, even a minority of one. That means that the individual doesn't have value and the state has all, or the, the majority has the whole value. And where, yes. I, where, where I'm seeing this go is that, well, that majority is that one language, like English, right. you were saying, one yes. currency, one religion, one spirituality, one everything. And if you are the black sheep that if you don't fit the within virus. that the virus the pathogen yes. uh, if you don't fit within that individuality you just get eliminated yes because you don't you cause too much trouble too much turmoil you're questioning the status quo we don't want that right the status that, quo yes yes my buddy um call him marty for sake of anonymity <laughs> hey marty <laughs> <laughs> it's not his name but yeah um <laughs> but he was getting all upset because we, we we did a podcast and i loved having him on because he's an incredibly he, he, he even if he gets drunk he can still articulate the hell out of a conversation amazing I, like if i wanted if i wanted a lawyer i'd still want him even if he's incapacitated <laughs> got it his brain is like I, I would yeah totally want him in my corner we might have different political leanings but i like the way it's it, he's different but I am I respect him as opposed to the typical liberal that can't articulate even the reasons as to why they believe the thing they believe. He's actually mm. able to at least articulate it. Give me some facts. Give me some history to back up what he's claiming. And I said, on that, I respect you immensely. I might disagree entirely with your argument, but I respect you can articulate where you're coming from. And you have some facts. You know, you're able to come up with something to come to that conclusion. He's not only regurgitating. And, um, Yes. And okay. I was driving him home from having him on the, on the podcast. And I mentioned something came up about him being gay. He's like, well, you got something against me being gay? I'm like, well, you know, I'm a Christian. You're like, yeah, but you know, but I'm like, dude, we've gone out to dinner together. Both you and I have paid for each other's meals and stuff like that. Said I wouldn't have invited you on the podcast if you thought I was kind of, you know, against gays or whatever. I said, I wanted you on there because I respect the hell out of you. I said, and you don't have a car, but I'm dropping you off because I don't mind driving you around. I have nothing against you. Mm -hmm. And then later on, five, seven months later, I posted something about a new letter that was being added to LGBTQ on some lady was saying, and it was the S and apparently it was supposed to stand for Satanism. And again, as a Christian, obviously is sparking my interest, <laughs> whether I was getting a misinformation, whatever. He got all defensive and I was saying, listen, I have nothing against the community. I just don't like them pushing, pushing, pushing. And they don't have any like recourse to explain why they think the maps should merge with the pride flag. Because then again, if I go against the pride flag, they automatically assume I'm against the maps flag or, you know, whatever, vice versa. They're merging the two at a certain point. When do you put a reins on it? And this mm -hmm. is what we were talking. I was telling you about with my buddy Brian. We were talking after the Nashville um, school shooting with the Christians. I didn't see anybody put up a cross for the Christian community. I didn't see anybody of the LGBTQ community actually like going to the person, the parents' house, grandparents' house, whoever, any relative whatsoever, and trying to reach out to the family, saying we, you know, we support you, like a Black Lives Matter thing. You know, we mm -hmm. we advocate blah blah blah. I saw everybody using that death or suicide, you know, death by cop suicide. I saw everybody utilizing that as a martyrdom, then going after the Christians for, you know, and I'm like, we came to as we were talking that they call it a community. But in essence, it's a very shallow term because I did not see a community. I no. saw riots. I mm -hmm. saw screaming. I saw people advocating that the shooter was right and that Christians should be. be and I'm like, how how does that? make sense it's not a community whereas he was talking from a military perspective a brotherhood is that you got your buddies back you don't care about a skin color tone color sexuality it says like you're in the field you're there to cover in their butt over there it's just a log on the fire they they spoke it just like every four years with elections with the black people they just like oh you know what we're gonna poke that racism card we're gonna make sure that the this guy's gonna get all promoted and you're gonna utilize that and this guy's gonna visit this person's home yada yada 
but they're not actually doing anything. They're not cultivating anything. And I'm just like, it breaks my heart because mm-hmm. you say one thing and then you call me a bigot where I'm over here just like, I'm just stating my vegan reasons for, you know, like I don't know if we've recorded that part yet, but I, again, it's like, it's like if, as a Christian, I'm explaining the statutes of my book that says I'm not supposed to personally partake of this. That's my personal conviction. You do you. I'm a libertarian from that perspective. So that's what you're feel led. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Do whatever you want to do behind closed doors. Okay. But if you're going by what the Bible says, okay, yes, you'll be judged, blah, 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 blah. Is that for me to pull a sword and push you off a roof or do whatever? No, no, that's not for me to judge. That's if, if I'm right, which I personally think I am, don't, again, could be wrong, but that's not for me to determine what I'm, what's going to happen to you. What's going to mean. My job is to still love you as another human being while we're still in existence among each other. Mm-hmm. That's ultimately my goal. And I think a lot of people jump to the conclusion that just because you're Christian, I'm like, no, it's like a vegan. I watched a video about something getting slaughtered. There's a reason now why I can't eat meat or I don't like the way it's processed or something like that. There's a reason I don't go into that baba because of this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of Christians as well, they automatically jump onto the bandwagon of it's like it's like a hatred thing. If you come out, if you're gay or you come out as gay, the whole family ostracizes you. And I think Mm -hmm. that's a bit extreme because I sympathize with my buddy Manny. He said he had a hard time coming out, yada, yada. And I said, dude. I, I sympathize with you. I do, mm-hmm. but don't try to alter the Bible to agree with what what you you're you're adapting a, a very core sentiment sentiment of a Bible to make it fit with your philosophy. And that's mm-hmm. sorry. I'll yeah. I'll give it back to you. I could go on and on, but no, it's fine. I totally resonate with what you're saying, Brendan. It's like as I said to you off camera earlier on yeah. private conversation. There is room in my heart for compassion. Yes, for whoever is outraged outrage culture is real it's toxic it's not providing any solution right but i do have compassion in my heart for these people because they do come from a hurt place you know growing up homosexual in a small town i went through bullying you know i was very much bullied for just being who i am and that is sort of what they have weaponized this hurt Mm -hmm. and this compassion and this humanity yes we're hurt yes we feel exiled but it doesn't mean that we need to become the number one most protected portion of society just for that like it's the victim mentality that is pushed forward and it's not only in the lgbtq plus community it's everywhere everybody's a victim celebrities are victims everybody's a victim everybody has a valid argument as to why they should be protected or as to why they should be compensated for going through x y and z but that's not as i said providing any solutions i think everyone has the sovereignty to heal their trauma It's not your fault what happened to you, but it's your responsibility to heal and grow and learn from it. 100%. Yep. What's associated with the LGBTQ plus community? It's a lot of sexuality. You know, if you watch, if you watch a pride parade, of course, you have people just wearing shorts and tank tops and just waving the flag, but you have those wearing leather dressed as dogs. It's very fetishized. It's very fetishized. And then you have a group of children right next to that so that's where i think i see a line or i see a boundary being crossed or i see danger because you know sexuality is not something that children are naturally attracted to or should gravitate towards to a young age i think there's something precious with kids they have a pure imagination we need to keep these minds intact and these souls intact because they're our future so if you pollute they should come to their own conclusion when they're of that age Amen, because it's so sad. We've, we're seeing it in the UK. I think they're a couple years ahead on the trans agenda, but you yes. see hospitals shutting down. Hospital after hospital are being sued and shutting down from lawsuits of, you know, people coming to the age of 18, 20 and realizing, hey, I wasn't a woman. I was just gay. I drank too much tap water. Now I want, I want, <laughs> I, I want the surgery reversed. But the funny thing is, ooh, you identify as non-binary. You're going to get the drugs. You're going to get the surgery. Everything's covered by the state. But get it reversed? Oh, you, you don't suffer from a psychosis anymore, so it's not covered. Right. Nothing makes sense. Nothing. It's upside it's, down, dude. It's upside down. And I even 
not even with the pride flag. Like I've gone after Republicans. I said, so you think it's OK that we wear hoodies with F. Joe Biden on it? And that's hmm. totally fine to be wearing in public in front of kids. That's totally fine to be chanting in stadiums when I just want to enjoy the game with my kid. Hearing an F palm being stated when well, I'm getting mm. some guys saying, well, you can't save them from my bottle. I said, yes, I know. But from a conservative perspective, is it better to lower ourselves to the standards of our nemesis or whatever, what have you, mm -hmm. and be promoting these words for kids to see now on the regular, how it's spelled, and then they're going to learn how to pronounce it. And it just becomes a, like a regular thing in our society. It's like you're not even trying to conserve or at least say, you know what? I know that's a word that's out there. Personally, once you're of age, you do whatever you want. But I would prefer you didn't do that in this household because it's kind of a derogatory term. It comes from, you know, go into the etymology, explain what it means. You know, it, it's not just something you throw out there. There's there's no conservation of the young mind anymore. Mm -hmm. I understand they're going to stumble into it, but it's kind of like watching an Andy Griffith. I'm not sure if you've seen that show from the 60s. Andy Griffith? No, I'm yeah. not aware of that. Well, yeah, if you can look it up, but like watch three episodes. It's just values where he's what you know, he's it's a sheriff who's raising his son in the South. Again, I personally I've been Ooh. thinking about it lately. I, they never had one black guy in the entire show, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now like, you know, he, he, he's stumbling on some moments where he's over here like, you know, you're not supposed to do that. There's you know, he's he's cultivating values constantly. Mm -hmm. If you watch the rifleman, that's the same thing with Mark McCain and his son. It was I was a Western. He's got a little 10 year old boy by the time he gets to be 15. He's grown up to be a young man. So that he's constantly teaching values to him about, you know, he'll use biblical parables or tell it in a Western way to his kid. And people were actually for three seasons were getting upset that it was getting too Christianized. So they started going the darker route with the series and ended up being canceled within a year and a half later. So that's that. And I'm just like, see, you can't even suggest it in an entertainment way of values of what you want to install in your kid. Because if you had to put them in front of a screen, at least make it worthwhile, not, you know, I'm going to smash all these little stars and collect a giant robot snake thing. I don't, I've seen some of the things and I'm like, this. I used to set up army forts with Lincoln logs for like two hours before I actually got to play with the army men because I was that dedicated with, you know, investing myself with my playtime. You know, oh. I had like five other sisters around me. So it was very rare that they'd play with me. And I would, you know, I was invested. I'd build forts. I'd build tunnels. You know, this was me. This was my childhood. And mm -hmm. now I'm seeing all these kids with these. What, what is it? What is it? What are they called? The iPads, little binky iPads. That's, it's keep them busy. Keep them busy. Yeah, so yeah. I can do my thing. Yeah. So I no, can do my so thing. so sad. It's dude. It, it, it breaks my heart. I'm the guy that's like, I, I've sat in um, waiting rooms, like at a doctor's office or dentist or some of like that. And I'll just start doing something with my hands for the kid that I'm seeing that's incredibly nervous about going in to see the dentist or some of that. And I'll just be doing weird shapes like this. And then I'll, you know, cultivate into a square, you know, oh. and I'll start seeing the kids start mimicking me. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm just doing something to help him get his mind off of the anxiety. And, you know, grandma or whoever is over there reading magazine, they don't notice me, but I'm trying to be cultivating. I might be a stranger, but I'm, I'm entertaining his mind with some things that he could personally be doing. You know, just that. making shapes or something like that, you know? It doesn't take much for kids. It really doesn't take much at all. Real. And you could be doing so much installing of creativity, how to learn to work with your body. So mm -hmm. you feel confidence. So when you're of an, of an age, you know, you don't feel shy or scared. Yep. You know, it's the littlest things that make Letting... the greatest things. Let, let them climb. Let them fall. Let them jump right. in that water it just rained parents are like no don't do this you're gonna get dirty and but it, it's because i think back to the orchestrated if i if we look at a house there's so many things that are fear not fear but like worrisome like electric outlets knives the sharp furniture pieces like everything could hurt a child then you have like imagine raising a child in new york like just crossing the street becomes completely boost your anxiety through the roof for the mother. But if we go back a couple of years back where you had like a house or like maybe the, the kid could like get hurt by the dog or just like, I don't know, but they could play in mud and the earth right. and just, just, right. just develop these skills and just interact with nature. Whereas today they build a, an emotional connection to a digital screen. Yeah. It's sad because we've created 
And even I, I've came up with this one while I was talking with my buddy and that he's one of the few people I can just like talk. Like sometimes he'll even give me looks, but he'll let me talk, you know? Mm. And I, I said, it's, it's for Christianity, it's become cubicle Christianity. And the thing is we're we're in our own little box. We don't want to talk. We don't want to reach out. It's just, I got my ticket. Everybody else is screwed. I get out with the rapture, you know, rep, just revelation says they get pulled out before the world goes into anarchy and chaos or whatever. And there's no discipleship. There's no investing in getting to know other people. It's just, you're all going to hell and it's going to be bad when I'm out of here. And I'm like, that's not Christianity. Christianity is planting roots. It's also cross-pollinating, connecting with people, seeing mm. how you can connect and help them. And have, as you said, compassion. Uh, and, and like uh, I was telling Manny, I said, I don't know, but I'm just sitting back as an observer. A lot of people that I have met that became gay, they suffered a traumatic incident when they're youth. And he's like, well, that's I said, I know for a fact that you, you were drunk. He didn't realize you told me this. He says you, you were at a Christian school. So you're traumatized already against Christianity right there. But a teacher took advantage of you. He says, I don't know. But again, there's several other people. I keep adding up the data. I'm not just spewing this out here or judging. I said, I understand trauma can make you want to seek an outlet of acceptance. Mm -hmm. The same thing with, um, you know, Chicago and kids joining gangs, especially with black kids and stuff like that. Yep. They want a dad figure. They want to connect. Mm -hmm. and so they'll start doing things. And even celebrities in Hollywood, if you want to go into the occult, I just want to be popular. I've always been laughed at. I know I have a talent for singing. So what do I have to do? Well, you have to sleep with three or four people before we can make you have an album. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it, and that's sadly how it goes. It's, it's downhill. They want to be popular. They just want to be loved and understood. And if we had compassion for these individuals before they even get to that point, we wouldn't be needing to rely on a system that compromises everybody or then utilizes said community that they create mm -hmm. to be a corporate thing or anytime they need them to you know, MK ultra somebody and go out and shoot a school room. You know, that's where I see it as is, is they're utilizing multiple br branches of a Hydra to use when they want to for their convenience. I was just watching yeah. something, Charlie uh, Manson, that was making the case that he could have been MK ultra because he was illiterate. He didn't speak much. The whole beard and long hair thing. He, he's like, he, he, they, I've been wanting to shave. He says they won't let, let me shave. And the long hair that I'm having up to down here says they won't let me. I was just, yeah, I was like, Wait a minute. So we get this creepy picture of you everywhere because they won't let you cut your facial hair. OK, So we start creating the stereotype. Yeah, they were talking about Bundy. and He's connected to a big family, one of the richer ones that run the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm beginning to think half these serial killers is is created because with Manson, it says it was the end of the 60s and the hippies because he kind of canceled out the whole um, you know, love is love or, you know, going out and, you know, partying with aphrodisiacs. It was kind of a crap. Yes. We're yes. Outside the system of not wanting to go to war. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to put a little damper on that. How do we control all of society? We have to do something so shocking that they don't want to do that anymore. So how much is MK Ultra and how much is just a fabric of accumulated trauma over time and generations? Even with time and generations as a Christian, you get to break that with Christ. But I do see that because even before I accepted Christ, my my birth father, Barry, I was talking with somebody on Ancestry who was like an aunt or something like that. And she said that there was times when even bus drivers were saying, I'm not driving the bus if Barry is on today. That is how bad of a kid he was. And then he um, grew up, met my birth mom, and they ended up doing a home invasion and they shot the owner of the home in the back of the head. So they both went to jail. Then I'm studying my birth mom. And again, I'm not coming out of this stuff with random. I've, I've gone through trauma. She was taken advantage of when she was like five or six years old in the closet up in upper upward Maine. Didn't talk about it, but she was still traumatized. And then when she was in teenage years, she was taken advantage of by the pastor's son in the church basement. Again, what is this trigger? No one's listening to me. And her mom, my grandma didn't want her. She's like, I already had three mm. kids. I don't want this one. I don't want this one. So they'd lock her in closets. They'd put her up in the chicken coop. You know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was messed up. So she's seeking somebody to just take charge. So she's going to fall for the bad boy. Ended up screwing up most of her life for 16 and a half years. You know what I'm saying? Again, I'm studying her trauma. I'm studying his trauma. When I came around, I had this massive temper. I might have been a small kid, but I could kick some butt. I remember I got in a fight one time when I was, uh, I don't know, first, second grade. I started wailing on this kid <laughs> in, the, in the, <laughs> the playground. I don't even remember what we were 
play anymore, dude. But I remember he was taller than me by at least three to four inches, and I was just going full on. Boom, it boom, took two boom. teachers to pull me off. Yeah. Wow. And I had that anger, but when I accepted Christ, I, I felt this. So like this anger of generational, I guess you could say, that wow. that demon that I had inherited, it felt like it literally did. That's my personal experience. I even jumped mm. and I looked at my dad. He didn't even see me um, jump, but I was like, there was something supernatural there. And I do think that is something that can be inherited is that you have Ooh. a mom that's, you know, did drugs, smoked, whatever, still not fixed it. When a time you're like 15, 16 years old, you're now hearing about this on the TV that it's cool, blah, blah, blah. Or you're seeing it with other classmates. You start experimenting because mm-hmm. you want to start connecting. That's, that's pretty much with anything. Mm-hmm. If, if, if your surrounding area is like if you're an animal, you're going to want to get where, you know, the, the plants are dying out. You're going to migrate to see if there's other greener pastures. It's the same mentality in psychology with human beings, where if you're not connecting with something in home being nurtured, you're going to go out and connect. Yep. As I was yep. telling, I, I, it started out with slavery. Then it went to child labor. And they were like, OK, we got a lot of bad hits with this. So how can we fix this now? Feminism. And what does feminism do? That takes two people now to double their workforce overnight. And you tell them it's equal rights. In the meantime, you lose all that cultivating with the child at home. You lose that time now with dad getting ready. You know, it takes two people yep. to get a kid through college. And people now have limited how many kids they have. In the meantime, in other countries, they're booming still at the beams. Mm-hmm. And we need iPads to raise those kids because we're too yes. busy providing for the family. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, yes. I see it. And and objectively speaking, if we look at a man and a woman, they're fundamentally different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yes. it's perfectly fine and beautiful like that. I think that everyone has their strength and weaknesses. And in a healthy, thriving society, every gender would be would be every gender's value would be utilized for the greater good. Like women Absolutely. are more nurturing. There's a lot of workplaces that require nurturing not just nursing not not only nursing yes. but like teaching and just organizing just organizing very much so I, i'm serious dude i've seen some of these office gals and i'm just like i would not be able to do this i hate paperwork i love writing but i hate like all the techie paperwork like just yep. somebody else do yep. that <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i'm willing to pay good money for you to do that because i see you have a skill mm-hmm. that, that that's my perspective i i, I don't you know work, workplace thing and that perspective, like, I understand there's some things where it's like lifting and stuff like that. I think the guy should get more money. But if it comes to office stuff, I'm going to give you statistic. I'm going to see how the guy does, too. But I would probably give more money to the woman because I know she has more skills to multitask, answer the yep. phone, do, send an email. I've seen it. And I I I will give them credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Also, like, I'm, I'm ticked because I've seen the effect a nurturing mom can have. And I think they've de- valued the woman what she can do at home there's it's not a, i don't call that degrading you're like dealing with little gremlins all day yeah like kids. housewives and uh mom at home used to be like so like shameful and oh you're a housewife or just staying at home mom and now you're seeing the pendulum swing where it's the mother who's like the entrepreneur and it's a dad stay at home dad <laughs> but i mean to defend the country the we norm. need it's becoming the norm. It's yeah. becoming the norm. It's like the woman reclaiming her justice, but I feel like it's a very ego-based justice. Yes. And that's maybe like an unhealthy masculine that is being triggered in the woman. Right. Whereas if the woman was in her, her healthy ma- feminine, she would be nurturing and loving and caring and just like sitting confident in her energy to provide to her family because it's fueling her, you know, like just doing Christ's work, like just letting source energy flow through her, like the love, like we yes. have an infinite well of love. If we just unlock it, if we get rid of the trauma, the limiting beliefs, the all of the, the weight we carry, if we get let go of that, so much love can just pass through. And that's yes. what the woman is more capable of than the man. But the man, when the man sees that, when the man in his healthy masculine sees that, will want to protect it. Mm-hmm. We'll want to 
give preserve. and provide and preserve. Yes. And, you know, yes. I always see the man as the one sailing the ship. Like, no matter what, this family is going to prevail. No matter what, we're going to make it through. And that's the energy we need from a man. But we need the woman's intuition to be like, okay, that's when the crops are going to sprout. This is what we should be doing. And it's not the man's job to be all bossy. Because that's the thing also. That's why maybe feminism had to arise, quote unquote, because the man was so like, Oh, I just finished working from Wall Street. I need my beer. I need to relax. And that's not, you know, that's not, it's devaluating for the woman. It's degrading. Yes. Like it, it makes her feel like the, 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 the slave, the slave, slave, Less yeah. slave. let's just say it that way. But that's, I think exactly the feeling that they a domestic having. slave. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, let me just be the boss and you're going to be the slave for a while. And hopefully we're going to find like a, a middle ground and balance down the line. But that's an interesting segue, I think, to dive into the nuclear family that is being directly attacked nowadays. Yes. What's your take on that? How, what does it stem from? Like, do you there, have There's any... a book you might want to pick up. I, I noticed you write notes, everyone. It's called Takedown by Paul uh, Kengor. It's for like 20 bucks now on Amazon. It has been like 44 for the last year, two years. So it's now kind of down to an affordable price, but Takedown. But it talks about the nuclear family unit and how communism was purposely instituting that to help rip up the strength of the of America, because we don't see that in Russia. We don't see that in China. Nope. It's predominantly in America where we have utilized this concept where sexual revolution, just experiment, have fun. Can I, mm-hmm. you know, but when you look and again, this is what I tell everybody. Take Marx for a, a, an example. Okay, I'm against communism. I'm care capitalist. Okay, whatever. Let's look at the individual himself, and then we're going to determine his philosophy. Let's take the philosophy out for a second. What was he as an individual? Well, Mm. he liked dabbling with dark spirits and stuff like that. He liked Faust play, where the guy made a deal with the devil. Everything must be destroyed. That doesn't sound like a healthy mindset. He was Mm -hmm. a horrible father. A good chunk of his kids got died because of his lack of making money. And he was always begging for money. He was a horrible yeah. son. He That's the thing. He was begging his family for money. He was yes. literally embodying these communism behaviors. Yes. Like your money and is mine. Yes, a lot so. of people don't know. He was racist. His daughter married a half black, half white guy. But he was enough black for them to be upset. And Engers, his co-writer of the Communist Manifesto, referred to him because he was uh, the black guy, kid, his son-in-law, he was in charge of the uh, communist district that was in France and it was near the zoo and referred okay. to the son-in-law as the gorilla. Yes, gorilla. He ended up committing suicide because he just couldn't take the stress of being constantly racially put down oh my by his God. father-in-law and whatnot. Oh but we God. don't talk about that. No. And again, constantly one thing after the other after the other. So when we now come back to the communist manifesto and the philosophy, I just looked at the man. I didn't appreciate what I saw. I'm not going to probably follow whatever he was teaching because that's your human compassion that yes. that was triggered, that was channeled. And that's what I yes. think that's maybe an interesting route we could go in a just in a society and the way we teach things, like teach people's history, people's background, because if we know the guy, the, the, yeah, the person, not solely just the, the like we, we bullet point wars, the civil war. This mm-hmm. war, the Revolutionary War, the Battle of Sons. But we rarely take a moment to to read about what was the build up to it. And a lot of times when you do, you start understanding the individuals. You understand that the, some of them are connected to the occult or three, that there is a Jesuit's hand in it nine times out of ten. And when we start looking at history that way, you start having a better understanding of what's going on in the present. And that mm-hmm. is why they don't like people like yourself and I and Nick and whatnot that are asking questions at least or can listen to somebody else articulate what they've researched because it now starts getting scary because they are now exposing what's going on. Right. People live in their tight bubble of safety, like yes. in Saren Brab, and it's all like normal. And I used to be like that. But when I think back of how when I would see the world that way, it felt nice. But mm-hmm. I'm like, how boring. Now it's like I have a reason to get up in the morning and not expose this, but I'm just so curious as to where we come from. And you said it, like history is being kept away from us. But if we know where we come from, we can better understand what's going on today. 
So what are things that have repeated in the past that we've mentioned maybe today, like feminism, nuclear family, wars, LGBTQ+, this is a safe space. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm accepted. Um, what, I mean, when you look into the, like the, the Tuskegee Airmen, the Buffalo Soldier, and this is what I was talking with my buddy Marcelo, and Marcelo's another one of those individuals, like he grew up Catholic, but he sees the hypocrisy. He doesn't understand half the stuff. And I've been getting books because I understand, like, again, the whole thing you just watched with Nick, The Bastards of Babylon on Rumble's episode four for people who are curious why I keep referring to. I'm connecting to where this stuff gets. I'm getting books. I'm getting resources. I'm getting visual, like it's a comic book explanation for 120 pages to understand that he's justified with where he's coming from. But I'm also trying to convert at the same time. Does it mean he has to do it? No, but I'm trying to provide him evidence and historical things to back up my claim that you are justified in your in your cynicism. I'm giving you credit on that, but I'm trying to help provide clarity. As with anything, the Buffalo Soldiers, what was the concept of that? Well, we have these black soldiers and we want to get these Indians off the land. So we're going to send in the black guy to go kill the red guy. And then at the end of the day, the white guy ends up getting the land. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Again, when you look at it that way, we don't talk about the Buffalo Soldier. A lot of people don't even know. Like, what, what was the Buffalo Soldier? <laughs> but yeah, Molly thinks Buffalo about it. Because their, their hair was curly and they're black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Not again, racist when you at all. At that, right. 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 And again, when you look at it that way, you're like, well, that doesn't seem nice. No, it's not. But does it, again, these are guys trying to feed their families. They're ex soldiers from the, you know, with, after the Civil War. They want to be paid. It's one of the few jobs that's probably. <laughs> You know, they can get away from the South. They're not going to be, you know, judged for being in, in wearing, you know, a uniform of a country to just help liberate them. The northern part, that is to say. So what are you going to do? Well, they say we got to take out some guys. I guess that's what I'll do because I'm a soldier, you know, and you even look up the definition of the word soldier. S-O-L-D. So. Oh, wow. OK. And I, wow. You know, I did a post on that, too. Is that actually the etymology of where? No, but I'm looking at the first four letters. It's yeah. sold. Yeah. When ideology, you're, and, and I, I have a quote in a, in a trilogy. I write a medieval trilogy and I've been doing it for several years. And sometimes I like doing the dialogue with myself. But there's a part where the guy says, he's like, what's a soldier's first order of, like that he's always supposed to do? And he's like, obey all orders. He says, that's not the words of a free man. That's the credence of a slave. Yeah. Obey. And when you look at it again, that's why I like writing my trilogy, because I want it to look like both sides could be the good guy. Both sides are doing some bad stuff with characters. But I want you, the audience, the reader, to look at what both sides are saying. And once in a while, get those philosophies going on when you're like, wow, I've never actually thought of something like that. Is this guy the actual good guy or is the other guy? You know, I wanted to do it so neutral where people are asking themselves these philosophical questions these characters are experiencing that we actually start acclimating that into our life. So when you look at the Tuskegee Airmen, what was that all about? Well, we want the white guy bombers to survive. We're going to have the ones with the red tails. That's what the movie Red Tails comes from. We're going to have them shoot at that. Why? Because it's bright. It's object. It's the first thing you're going to want to go after. Mm. So use them as cannon fodder. That doesn't seem right. Again, Black Panthers. We don't want to have it where the white guys are going to be accused of bringing the drugs into the country. So we'll put it on the Hispanics. We'll put it on the black guys. And then they even killed one of the leaders of the Black Panther movement. They shot him and his wife in the freaking bedroom. Why? I wouldn't be surprised if he wanted to come forward. That's what happens with a lot of things. A and lot of civil rights activists. Uh, yeah. Malcolm X. What's his face? Uh, Emma, Emma, um, Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, right when they were about to come forward and start stating I'm being compromised or someone's trying to talk to me. I believe this story is that uh, Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't just solely shot. He made it to the hospital and there was a guy that came in, had a cigarette, put it out next to the bed next to him, then grabbed a pillow and smothered him to death. Wow. And I'm like, wow, the amount of manipulated history that we get and what we're spoon fed. And then they just give us the highlight cherry pickers. And when they want to use the the race card, they want to use it to you know push a Democrat or again, I don't care about size. They just both, how both sides utilize the the groups that they now minorities. Excuse me. But since when does another human being become minor? Why do you accept that as a title? You're another human being so for you to accept that labeling. So demeaning. Mm -hmm. I, I hate when people are I'm like, do you, do you realize what they're calling? You? They want you to remember 
by political correctness, your place in society by saying you are minor, not a major. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah just, it's look, look at the praising people. Even look the at, savior is manipulating their subconscious mind with these yes. words. Like you're a minority. You're being oppressed. You're in danger. Right. They've declared this. They're, they have declared the state of emergency for the LGBTQ plus community. I'm like, where are the where are they dying? Where are they dying? And I guess it's, I get that there is backlash because there is, yes. but it's yes. not targeted at the individuals, as you say, as you say, Brendan, so many times. You don't care about what they do in the bedroom. You don't care about yeah. what surgery they want to have. Neither do I. But it's the proportion that it's taking and the effect that it's having on the children. Because you're literally telling kids, oh, if you want to have 10 million followers on Instagram and go to Drew Barrymore, red carpet, get brand deals, all you got to do is chip off your parts and take some estrogen and voila. And the sad part is that they're utilizing, to circle back to the hurt, like I was bullied, they're using that hurt place in people's mind. Same with celebrities. I, I, I'm not able to make it. Here's a solution. But at what price? Yes. I, right. You're literally price? selling your body and soul and, you know, you have the gift of writing. Sure. But now you're, you're, you're paying the piper, you know, is mm -hmm. it worth it? Is it worth it? Yes. I've heard that their soul is degrading over time, like literally. So, I would say so. at some point you're just the facade your that you, you're, you're shell insane, completely insane. So there's an entity sucking away the person's energy. Yeah. Well, you even, you look up the word and the definition originally for um, religion, rely, okay. and then jinn. Now, granted, you're going to see G-I-O-N, but look up J-I-N-N. -N. Mm -hmm. And jinn, yeah. yeah. Rely Ooh. on dark spirits. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Okay. So when I'm telling people I'm a man of faith, I'm not religious, I'm, I'm being very serious about this. I love that. The Tower of that. Babel, the whole thing with that. If you read the, a lot of Christians are going to go on the thing, but like you said, open space. So I'm going to talk about it. Book of Enoch states specifically that the Nephilim or aliens, whatever people want to talk about, the Anunnaki, mm -hmm. they came down and they had affairs with the daughters of men. And they made a pact that they were going to, you know, cro procreate with these women, yada, yada. This was not what God had intended at all. They did so. They created the offspring of the giants. And they were getting so big up to like 300 feet. They started eat, eating each other. Um, they started, you know, mass murdering, slaughtering things. And God's like, all right, we're done. We're not doing this anymore. I'm going to flood the whole earth. So when we get to Genesis 6, 4, it's a hint at it. But all pastors are 90 times percent going to skim right over that verse. And just go on to Noah building the ark. There was a reason why he was doing that. He was wiping out these guys. So it says in Enoch that when the giants die, they're not going to go with you guys. Well, I'm going to be locking up under the year of your Euphrates, which is currently drying up. And it says in Revelation, when it dries up, these guys come back out. What is drying like up? Drying up the uh, river Euphrates. You can look it up. It, it says in Revelation that it's when it's dried up, it's going to be pretty bad down here at tribulation. It's only like a foot Ooh. tall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because but is there some connection with Inner Earth, Agartha? Could they? Could they yeah, be? I'm, get, I'm getting. I'm getting to that. Yeah. So it says that they can't go to heaven. They're going. They're not going to be going down below. Your spirits are going to be forever meant to roam the earth. So spirits, we have dark spirits, rely on dark spirits and whatnot. And when they're slain, so this is not when the children of Israel are going through an exodus, they're not just doing manifest destiny, let's wipe out the Canaanites. You no, they're wiping out a abominable offspring. A lot of people get that wrong and they look at the Bible and it's just like, no, these are people that have been tainted with angels' blood and they're, that God says, I don't want these people still in existence, out. So this is what led to all of that. So now when we get to modern day age, we have the Tartaria theory, which I personally believe was built by these giants, but they didn't get destroyed in the flood. So when we're seeing all these giant doors and whatnot, what does it say? Founded. It wasn't built. It was found. Oh, okay. So they put it they made it a church. They utilized it into a library. They kept, you know, and I'm like, that makes a lot of sense to me because okay. that we, we don't, we somehow are building all these little boxes, all these factories, we, all these ch churches today look crap <laughs> in mm -hmm. comparison to all Jeez. these chapels they all were magnificent. over France. yes the pyramids and granted can they fix the windows and whatnot yes can they adapt a few things here and there absolutely you found it go do what you want but it's infiltrated 
religion, mm. dark spirits. And then what do we do with the crusades? Well, let's go wipe them out. You know, no, you're not doing the name of God that that, you know, so when it's talking about the underworld and stuff like that, I personally have come to the thing of dome earth. I believe in dome where there is the dome overhead, which is like made, made of um, glass, very thick glass. that can't be penetrated, even though all these nuts try to do that. And there's sea above it because it says permanent. water. Yeah. Yes. That's what the Bible states. Then there's water below. Underneath is known as Sheol, which is S E H E L U L or O L mm-hmm. in Hebrew. And that's underneath. It's hollowed out. It's like a three. I'm like, okay, it's it's a globe, but more like an eggshell mm-hmm. turned upside down. Yeah. No, I, I is, is the prison where we are, right? Well, there's like that little flat plane in between, but we're being influenced by down below. Yeah. And God wants us to look up and accept his son and be indwelled with his Holy Spirit. So when this is worth something I'm trying to tell people, it says in Genesis 6, 4, that the sons of God came down and had affairs of daughters of men. Fast forward to the New Testament. Behold, what manner the love of the father that we should be called sons of God. Now, this is a phrase that's in two different areas, but we know the old sons of God, they were bad boys. So what does it mean now for us? Mm -hmm. This is where if I could. This is where, again, people say Christianity is, no, 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 it's very pro-women. There was a ceremony with Jews where when the dad found a man in the community that was respected, he was able to make money, he looks like he could be a good provider, it's going to be a good match. I'm going to try to see if I can set him up with my daughter. Brings the young man over, pours him a glass of wine, hands it to his daughter. And I was here where she said, you know what? I don't want to accept this glass because choosing to drink from this glass, the young man has just drank from means I am accepting of this decision my father has provided for me. But if she refused, it would have been honorable to be like, okay, go back to the drawing board. I'll find somebody else for you. But if she chose to drink of this glass, the young man would add on to his house to induct the new bride in. So now when we get to the communion with Christ in the Last Supper, and at least most people are familiar because of the Da Vinci painting and whatnot, he says to his disciples specifically, this is my body with the bread. This is my blood. Here is the cup. So when he's handing the cup over, you are accepting the new marriage covenant. You're accepting the father's son as a choice. The symbolism of that. The, well, again, most Christians are over here saying, thank you for dying on the cross for me and yeah. doing all that stuff for me. I appreciate it. It's a marriage ceremony. You should be rejoicing and saying thank oh. you that I had the choice to make. Again, religion has infiltrated it, and that's a lot off of Catholicism, which connects to Nimrod's uh, family. We could do that in another episode, or, you know, just refer them to Nick's video. But if people understood what religion is versus this faith and this marriage covenant, like people still say, "Oh, the Jews are still God's people." That's not true. Jeremiah three eight stating, "I've given them the bill of divorce, and because of this bill of divorce." There's now a new marriage covenant with God's son, the New Testament. Again, do modern churches get that? No, they say, oh, this is God's house. No, it ain't. It says in the Bible, greater is he that is within you. Know ye not your body is a temple Mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be in a building, people. And this goes into what you were saying with compassion. It's in you, the love you can emit in your communities. If people understood this concept, which is supposed to be the core of Christianity, where we don't have fear of um, the Fauci flu, we don't have a fear of dying. We can actually incorporate and, you know, cultivate and ask people or have them ask of us, why do you not do that? And like everybody else in society is concerned about money. How come you guys don't worry about that? Because this is only a temporary existence for us. We're going to be going somewhere else. You know, we're we're moving through. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. Sorry, I go on my rants, but I get passionate. (laughs) I love passion in this house. Passion is so welcome in this house. And that's that makes for amazing episodes. And I think you're going to be back, man. I so many things I took notes of. And as you said, like the the episode you were talking with Nick about Nimrod. I want to know more about that. So we could have a tab open for that one. But I want to close with. I always try to close with a positive perspective on these topics. I love faith. I really, really do love faith. And I love what you said about like the love coming from within our body being a temple. Yes. Yes. I think the same. The rapture is is there. Okay. Enlighten me on this. 
I don't think that's my understanding that we, it's not the message of the Lord that we should be just waiting to be saved. I think we should spread the word of truth. As you're saying, it's not a passive thing like, oh, I believe in Christ. I'm going to be saved just right. because I believe so. But there's a war to be fought with yourself and with yes. what's going on right now. So Unity. what community exactly bring people together, get them out of fear. What's your last word of wisdom on this? How people well, listening to this, maybe they're a little bit afraid, worried, confused. Right, right. But like if we zoom back and look at the bigger picture, what can we do in terms of practices and just how can we be better in the world moving forward? Well, it says to be the light in the world and the salt, um, according to the teachings of Christ. And I think that's ultimately what you want to start doing is in Again, I'm not going to twist arms or, you know, I, I'm supposed to promote my faith. I will admit that. But at the same time, I would recommend buying some books because they want to, like <laughs> I said, the, di the digital passport thing, get the books, start reading, start, start investing because people are going to start searching for answers. They're going to want questions. The economy crashes, cool, whatever. Remember, it's the value of social equity where it used to be you relied on your neighbor. Hey, Build me my house. I'll give you a chicken. I'll give you some cow, you know, mm -hmm. you know my cow or something like that. It, it was the value of community and li that was livelihood, not the livelihood of materialism. Mm -hmm. The value of social equity is what you can contribute and get from your community. And if we start incorporating that into our everyday society without having to rely on the dollar, without, ha you know, like, you know what? Screw the overtime for one or two weekends. Just say, you know what? We're going for a picnic. We're going to the ocean. Yeah, there's a lot of wow. crap in the world. We're going to just make a day of it because that is what we have right now. But like I said, just invest in yourself. Get offline for a bit. It, listen to a podcast like this. If it helps just get some processing while you're sitting there fishing or whatever you do for your downtime or cleaning the house. It, it I mean, if I had to give positivity, that that's what I'd recommend. Mm. That's what I'd recommend. Mm -hmm. You're right. Fostering That's that it. positivity and love within, because yes. it can get really dark really quick and gloom and doom. But at the end of the day, I think it's our duty to keep our vibes high and keep our surrounding together and be the glue in this chaotic world. Yes. The so, light, as everything gets dark. Please. That's what we're supposed to be, you know? And I, I think, uh, I'll admit it as a Christian, I, I look around at my quote unquote community and I, I'm depressed, dude. I'm mm -hmm. depressed, but again, that doesn't mean that I have to become like them. I start the war from here, as it said one time in the during the the storming of the beaches in Normandy. The guy got what a couple miles off where he was supposed to land. He says, "You know what? We're just going to start the war from here." It, it, don't don't worry about the exact directions. Just start from where you are. You might be imperfect. Everybody is, but you know, you'll make it. Just start mm -hmm. looking for truth. Start buying some books and be the light from where you are. Yes. So we're still blessed with technology. We still have access to it. So in the meantime, I'm going to keep awakening Babylon through Babylon, <laughs> the matrix through the matrix. And maybe one day, who knows, exactly. it's all going to crash down and I'm going to be living on my ranch doing just that, like trading chickens for a better Porsche. But um, yeah, so in the meantime, where can, fo <laughs> where can folks find you? Do you have any offers going on and um, any, any interesting projects you can leave listeners to? Yeah, I think you could type it up or just look at a pay copy and paste. Um, but Crollology, if you don't know how to spell it, um, 101 on Instagram. Um, you probably get a warning if you follow me. So if you like that kind of stuff, <laughs> I'm one of those people. Uh, if you're not thin skinned, I'll, I'll post stuff. But again, just be open minded. Know that with my posts. And then the other one is Rumble. Chorology 101, all one uh, word. I haven't done any videos yet. As I said in the beginning, I'm still learning the techie stuff, but I am I am working on it, hopefully to be launching within a month or so. That's pretty much all I got. Amazing. Well, thank you, Brendan, for gracing us with your presence. All of Brendan's links are going to be in the show notes, of course. And again, thank you guys for tuning in. This was your daily dose of the Antoine Effect. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. All right, gorgeous CEO, that's it for today's video. That's it for today's episode of The Antoine Effect with Brandon Kroll. I hope you walk away with more than just golden nuggets, but a heightened perspective of today's society. Maybe some things didn't resonate, maybe some things did, but as long as you keep an open mind, and a broad horizon, I think there's nothing wrong in delving into different possibilities as to where we actually come from as a collective society. 
Now, if you like this episode, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss next week's episode. And if you're listening from anywhere in the podcast world, a rating and review would mean the world to me. Again, this episode was brought to you and produced by your CEO Studios. I'll see you guys next week for the next episode of The Antoine Effect.